afternoon. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, Saturday was a little, number of positives out there. I uh, thought early in the game, again, we had a fast start, scoring our first three possessions. Defensively, forced three punts and a turnover uh, in their four, first four possessions. Uh, got things rolling, big uh, punt return by Jaden Price. And a um, lot of, like I said, a lot of positives. I think we we're seven of eight on third down offensively. Um, did some good things. Uh, second half kind of stalled out a little bit offensively. Uh, weren't on the field for probably a half hour of uh, actual time. And so I think we just kind of lost a little bit of our mojo there. But uh, was was pleased with some of the young guys who got in late in the game and played and executed at a high level. It's good to see those guys, you know, here in the middle to, to you know, second half of the season's having some success. But played two true, true freshmen. Uh, Jalen Crumby, Jalen Duffy, both played, both played uh, relatively well. Uh, I know both of them, I think I said it on Saturday, had huge smiles on their face, uh, having an opportunity to play their first collegiate game. And um, sounds like uh, both their, their parents were, were watching via streamed uh, copy of the game at some point. And so uh, moms and dads got to see them get out on the field in the Fargo Dome too. So I uh, was excited for both those guys. and, and uh, knowing that we can continue to use those guys for the rest of the, uh, the remainder of the, the regular season. But I'll open it up for questions. Uh, did you uh, appeal that or where, where did you? So wait, I, I, I'm supposed to have a phone conversation here any minute. So um, hopefully I'll have some positive news. Are you preparing to not have? Uh, yeah, of course. We've got to prepare for worst case scenario. That's, uh, you know, I think... Uh, Anytime you deal with adversity, you got to prepare for try to either outwork it or out prepare it. So I mean, it's we we rep new, numerous guys at safety during the course of the week. Darius Givens, Ryan Jones, who started for us already. So um, you know, it's no different than an injury. Um, you got to be prepared for it. You never like to see these things happen, uh, regardless if you think it was right or wrong. Preparing for the worst, you know, getting ready to play outside in the lovely weather we've been having. How much does how much different does this week look preparation wise? Are you guys practicing outside at all uh, during this week? Kind of we what will, you guys? We'll be inside tonight just because it's it's our first night when we're only in in uh, we're only in spider pads, but we'll be outside for the majority, probably the first half of practice the next two nights. But at the same time, we've got to balance it with having quality work too. It looks like the weather's not supposed to be super bad. I thought I saw potentially. Upper 40s. Uh, now, again, it, <laughs> upper Midwest, that could change in a blink of an eye. So we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed at this point. Stuffle? Joe, yeah. uh, day to day. Hopefully, we'll get him back at practice today. Uh, Will status? We know. Yep, I think he's off the, the two games. He, he won't be back this season, unfortunately. And we'll get him healed up and, and on the mend. Heisman then to. And Jackson, do, or what do yeah, you do there? Yeah, I mean, still, it's going to look very similar to what it looked like a year ago just when Eli was out. It's Cody Heisman, Jackson Duton, Heifer, Logan Larson. Uh, you know, Javi's got to step up, continue to play well. And so, I mean, thank goodness leading up to this point, we played, you know, five guys a game. At least what well, we know we have four. Not last year, how much you count on? Because, I mean, he got thrown in against Arizona. He's played against the Jackson. Cody Heisman. Yeah. Well, I, I think he's his. His plays continue to elevate. Uh, the thing that we continue to work on with Cody is his pad level. Uh, and that's that's probably typical for most young guys is um, they, they fall into that trap sometimes of, you know, at the high school level, they're bigger, stronger than everybody, and they can get away with that. Well, not at, not at this level and, and not in a game like this coming up. You said obviously a game you want to win every year. Does it yeah. feel more must win this season? I think it's the same as every season. You know, we want to go one and zero. It's the same as every week. Uh, you know, I think we make too big of it. Uh, then do we 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 just do we distract from what we're trying to accomplish all week? Try to defend these guys and pick there. I mean, they got receivers, running backs who are pretty high level. I mean, and it, we gotta find ways to get them off schedule. Uh, I think that's one of the things that just as you as we've navigated and watched their film from this season. Nobody's really done a very good job of of getting them in second and long, third and long. Uh, it feels like they're in third and short all the time. Um, and that just allows them to hang on to the football. The game flies by, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you only have one or two possessions of the football. So um, we have to do a good job of, of understanding where we want to funnel the football uh, on the different run frames that they have. They've, they're really good at, 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 what, at what they do. Uh, their kids play at a high level. I mean, we've... Seems like we've been talking about the same kids on their football team for the last four years. 
Um, and they have a ton of experience. They have a ton of, uh, you know, a ton of reps. Guys have played a lot of football, and, and both programs know each other well. And so we need to, we have to, we have to play with great technique, great fundamentals. We have to execute. We got to do the little things better than we had, you know, especially uh, last January. The talent that they have, just running backs, receivers. Yeah, do you think you're more likely to maybe stack the box a little more, or maybe play some nickel, or? I think we got to. I think we're gonna have to change it up a little bit, have a wide variety, and some diversity. I think if you get stuck in the same thing over and over, that's when they'll really start taking advantage of you. And their talent level really go off here over the last four or five years since you've been head coach. Where have they exceeded in that level? Well, I, I think I, the majority of the guys who play are all a part of one big class. Um, I think is it fifteen or sixteen guys or sixty year players? So they've been what, the class of two thousand and seventeen, maybe two thousand eighteen. So I think they just you know they have some tremendous players, in state guys that probably have really elevated and played well. But you know continuity. Um, is a big piece of it. Uh, you know, I think Coach, uh, the, the, their offensive coordinator, does a, does a tremendous job. And, and, and I've gotten to know uh, Coach Rogers probably over the years, um, both being defensive guys, got to know him a little bit more this offseason. Uh, he's done a great job of keeping this thing going in the right direction. Um, he's always was a really good, you know, defensive coordinator. He's, uh, it's good to see that. I mean, he's doing a great job of, of leading their team and, and, and keeping them focused on, on the task at hand. Last three meetings, South Dakota State has put up 95 points against you guys. What is it about their offense that makes it tough for your defense to defend? Well, I think, well, I don't think it's tough just for our defense. I think it's been tough for everybody's defense to defend. Uh, but I think just the, some of the things we've talked about, just how, how talented they are in multiple positions. They, they can uh, – they can stretch you vertically. They can stretch you horizontally. Uh, they have a running back that's probably going to be in the NFL at some point. Some at some day. They got an NFL type offensive lineman that they've developed from uh, from freshmen, and so just very talented um, and, and a group that executes at a high level. Uh, you know, they, they've had a couple different coordinators over uh, these kids' uh, careers, but. You know, they, they've seemed to kind of keep the main thing, the main thing, and uh, they execute, they play well, uh, fundamentally very sound. Um, you know, I think part of it is, is, is you know, giving up explosive plays. we got to find ways to get them, like I said before, get them off schedule, get them uncomfortable. Um, and, of course, that's easier said than done. Line really strong up front. Kind of, what's the mission for uh, that you give to the D lineman, especially having to replace Will and uh, you know things like that? Kind of, what's the main mission going in? Oh, we got to play pad level. Uh, you know, we, we have to anticipate. Uh, they do a lot of things with with you know trade shift and motion, and so we can't let our eyes get distracted. Um, we got to play off the blocks in front of us versus trying to peek and find the football uh, and make the plays as they come to us. Uh, anytime you try to do too much against a good football team, you're gonna you're gonna pay the price. Kowski uh, adjusted through the, the three meetings you've seen him when you saw him as a freshman to what you saw in January. <laughs> Tremendously intelligent. You know, they, they have a lot of offense. Uh, they, they do a lot of things, especially when you start uh, incorporating the trade shift in motion. Um, so he has to he, – he navigates and, 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 and gets them lined up unbelievably well. Uh, and I, I've anticipated it all starts with him and his ability to communicate and grasp what they're doing offensively. Uh, he's continued uh, to make better and better throws the older he gets, and I'm sure that's just a, a byproduct of longevity, but also seeing just numerous pictures uh, going against their defense every every spring, every fall camp. Um, so that's where I've seen his his game develop the most as, as he's gotten older. And uh, again, I think he's a he's a tremendous leader. He's a guy that's played kind of banged up before, uh, and I, so I think. You know, I, I, I got to believe that their team sees that and they, they rally around that when, when one of your best players is willing to, uh, to play, maybe not at 100%, that could be pretty powerful. Uh, these last two starts for Oscar Benson has really helped him prepare for a game like this. Oh, of course. I mean, anytime you get extra reps and, and reps in a game, uh, I can't help but think it will help him, you know, as, as, as we lean on him more and more moving forward in the, last, in the month of November. This month, I mean, I know November is always important, but even Cam said it, this is a huge month. Knowing what's you got three ranked teams, I know you're worried about SDSU, right. but give me a sense of the the pressure or what's coming up for these next three games. I, I think that, that's the thing we have to do a good job of as a staff and myself, most importantly, is let's just keep 
There's a focus on one week at a time. And then, you know, on Saturday, we can turn the page and look at the next one. Uh, I think if we start looking at it as a cumulative effect, we can, uh, that can be a little bit overwhelming, especially for our team right now. That's, that's not what we need. We need, to, we need to make sure that we have everyone aligned on, one, on, on this plan for this week. Thank <laughs> you.